it's easy to look at some of the more extreme new religious movements and ask, how on earth did anyone ever go along with this? The answer is often found in the figure of the charismatic leader. I'm Lily Wilkinson. Let's talk about sects. Charismatic leaders, usually men but not always, have an uncanny ability to get people to believe in them. This sometimes goes horribly, horribly wrong. Some of the best known charismatic leaders include Jim Jones, Charles Manson and David Koresh, but I'll be talking about them in a later episode. This week I want to focus on three other charismatic leaders, and a warning, there's some pretty gruesome stuff here, so proceed at your own peril. Much like Draco Malfoy, Erval LeBaron was given a name at birth that suggested he'd turn out a little bit evil. He was part of a Mormon fundamentalist group that had moved to Mexico in order to practice polygamy. He became the leader of the group by murdering both of his brothers, as well as ordering his followers to kill the leaders of two rival polygamous sects. Murder was pretty much Erville's only problem-solving strategy. Someone wanted to leave his church? Murder. His father-in-law's wife snubbed him at a wedding? Murder. His own 17-year-old daughter sassed him one time too many? Murder. In 1979, Erville was arrested and extradited to the US, where he was sentenced to life imprisonment. He died two years later, but his story doesn't end there. While in prison, he wrote a 400-page Bible, which he called the Book of the New Covenants, which included a hit list of disobedient church members who were to be put to death. Three of the people on the list were murdered simultaneously in 1988. These killings became known as the Four O'Clock Murders. It's estimated that since his death in 1981, more than 25 people have been killed as a result of Erville's Bible. Rock Terrio thought the world was ending. In 1977, he formed the Ant Hill Kids Commune, a breakaway sect from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Terrio's charm and magnetism made the venture sound appealing, a life of peace, free from sin. But in practice, things weren't so utopian. Terrio banned members from having any contact with the old church or their families, and they were only allowed to speak to each other if he was present. The end of the world was coming, Terrio claimed, in February 1979. When it didn't, he decided that an appropriate backup plan would be for him to marry all of the women. This resulted in at least 20 children with nine different women. His followers were highly devoted because if they weren't, they were punished. Punishments included being whipped, beaten, forced to break their own legs with sledgehammers, sitting on lit stoves and eating excrement and dead mice. The children weren't spared these punishments. Sexual abuse was rife. Children were encouraged to throw stones at each other, and Terrio was responsible for the death of a baby who he left outside during a snowstorm because it wouldn't stop crying. Terrio subjected his followers to purification sessions where their sins were literally beaten out of them. He also claimed to be a spiritual healer and performed surgery on his followers. One follower, Solange Boylard, complained of a stomach ache. Terrio gave her a crude enema with molasses and olive oil, then cut open her abdomen and removed a section of her intestine with his bare hands. He ordered another woman to shove a tube down Boylard's throat and blow. Boylard died the next day. There are other things that he did to his followers that I just don't want to say out loud. Suffice to say, he was a terrifying, unhinged individual who, thankfully, was arrested in 1989 and is currently serving a life sentence. Of course, not all charismatic leaders are quite so evil. Sun Myung Moon was the leader of the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity, also known as the Unification Church, colloquially known as the Moonies. According to Moon, the crucifixion of Jesus was a mistake. The actual plan was for Jesus to save the world by finding the perfect woman and having perfect sinless babies. Because Herod and his friends ruined the plan, God had to create another messiah who Moon prophesied would be born in Korea in 1920, which coincidentally, was the time and place of Moon's own birth. I know, right? The church really took off in the 1970s when Moon moved to the United States. And today the church has a presence in over 100 countries and has anywhere from 250,000 to 3 million members, depending on who you believe. There was and is a lot to like about Moon's teachings. His interpretation of the Bible is all about bringing more joy and love to the world. Moon opposed communism and supported the election of South Korea's first female president. The church continues to be active in protecting victims of illegal sex trades. Way back in 1974, Moon called for the US's first African-American president, saying, we've had enough of white presidents, so let's this time elect a president from the Negro race. We must never forget that we are brothers and sisters in a huge human family. It's not all good news, though. 
Moon had some fairly unpopular opinions about Judaism, claiming that the Jewish victims of the Holocaust were being divinely punished for crucifying Jesus. His pro-marriage agenda also made him anti-divorce, anti-premarital sex and anti-homosexuality. The Unification Church is best known for its mass weddings, known as the Holy Marriage Blessing Ceremony. Couples who participate are said to be removed from humanity's sinful lineage, becoming literal children of God meaning that they and their children are free from the consequences of original sin. Part of the church's mission to bring peace to the world involves breaking down nationalist boundaries by matching eligible church members to create interracial marriages. These ceremonies have been attended by up to 50,000 couples at a time, many of whom have never met before. Moon died in 2012, and the church is currently led by his wife, Huck Ja Han. The church remains incredibly powerful, owning international news agencies, hotel chains, football teams, and other business interests. Thanks for watching Let's Talk About Sects. References for this episode can be found down there, and if you want to know more about my forthcoming culty novel, you can click there. Please join me next week when I'm going to talk about yoga. Mm -hmm.